Do you wanna get 24 hours of battery life with your MacBook? Well, you can, but I am surprised by how little people know about this. Now, I've mentioned it a couple times in other videos, but today I'm gonna show you exactly how to set it up and best use it, how it works, the performance, and the battery life that you gain depending on which MacBook you have. Now, there's been many Windows laptop companies that advertise crazy battery life, but time and time again, when we test it, they fall short. For example, even the new Dell XPS 13 Plus with the latest processors that costs more than an M2 MacBook Air, well, that thing died on us, whereas the M2 MacBook Air still had 40% battery life remaining while having way more performance. Now that was using the M2 Air normally, but if we are gonna be saving battery life, the battery life can actually get up to twice as good while still having better performance. And I'll show you that in just a bit. Now, three years ago, I showed you guys how to make your Intel-based MacBook run cooler and quieter, and at the same time, save some battery life. So if you're running an Intel one, you guys might wanna watch that video. But since then, Apple released the M1 chip Chip, which had killer performance and it had amazing battery life. It took it to the next level. But with Apple's M2 chip, a lot of reviewers said that the battery life actually got worse, especially if you push it, because Apple ended up boosting clock speeds, running more power, and trying to maximize performance so the chip actually looks good. Now that made some people, including us, a bit upset because it's almost like it's just an overclocked chip and that's why we called it more of a stopgap. But there was one thing that I loved about the M2 series, and that is the fact that the efficiency cores got much more powerful. And with the new 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros, instead of having only two efficiency cores, we now have four. And I'll show you guys what difference this makes in terms of battery life. Now, I'm also gonna be talking about the M1 laptops. So if you have one of those, make sure to stick around. But with these new M2 series, if you're pushing them hard, the battery life is actually worse. But for regular mixed use, they could be quite good. And with this change, they're gonna get amazing. So let me first show you guys the increase of battery life. With the M2 MacBook Air, you go from having around 10 hours of mixed-use battery life to about 15 if you're gonna be using this. And then if you're doing some lighter tasks and if you're not maxing out your brightness all the time, you're doing web browsing, things like that, you can actually go up to 20 hours of battery life. Now, for the 14-inch MacBooks, you're gonna go from nine hours up to 14, and with that mixed use, I'm counting like some video editing, some photo editing, and tougher productivity like that. And for lighter tasks, simple stuff, up to 18 hours. But the killer is if you have a 16-inch, which has the biggest battery that you can fit onto an airplane, well, that will go from 12 hours up to 18 with mi mixed productivity tasks, or 24 hours for light use. And that is absolutely insane. Now, the way that this happens is the new low power mode that Apple added a while ago. When they gave us this, I didn't make a big deal about it because with the M1 series, it is not as good. But I'll still show you guys those numbers. But with the M2 and the new efficiency cores, it is absolutely amazing. So I'm gonna start out with the M1 Pro 16 inch laptop, giving you guys the performance differences. Using this with the M1 Pro, MacBook Pro drops our single core and multi-core performance scores, but the multi-core by very little. And if we take a look at the M2 Pro version, we also see a drop, but the crazy thing is, even when saving power, we still get a multi-core score of 13,000 for Geekbench 5, beating out the M1 Pro's 11,300, while getting way better battery life. Now, as far as CPU power usage, the M2 Pro does use more wattage regularly. And when we're using low power mode, you will see that the M2 Pro still uses a little bit more. But the kicker is with this new M2 Pro chip, you can use the low power mode and still get better performance while using less power with the other one. Now with the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros, Apple is more targeting the amount of power that is used 
for this mode to give you good performance while saving battery life. And it works great, but the really impressive part comes in with their lower end laptops like the MacBook Air. Here, when we're using low power mode, you are mostly using the efficiency cores, which is why the M2 MacBook Air gets insane battery life uh, compared to the other machines because it has four of them and they're very powerful. Now with M1 MacBooks, you go from about 20 watts down to about four and a half, which is crazy. That's a huge savings in battery life. But unfortunately, the performance drops so much from over 7,000 to 3,700 that it's not really worth using. But with the M2 chip, we also see a huge drop in power usage, but the performance drops much less. In fact, the drop is about 40%, but if we look at the average wattage used, it goes down from nine and a half down to three and a half, even less than the M1 chip while having way more performance, almost double. And because this machine is using about a third of the power for the CPU, that's where you can go from 10 hours of battery life up to 20 for simple light tasks, or about 15 if you're doing things like video editing, photo editing, things like that, which is crazy. And that machine can charge to 50% in just 30 minutes, meaning you're getting 10 hours of battery life in just 30 minutes. That is crazy. But how does it perform in low power mode? And I think you will be surprised. For Blender 3D rendering, the performance dropped very little, and that's because this also affects the graphics usage. It makes it way more efficient. But for video exporting, it did get quite a bit slower. But the crazy thing is that when you compare it to the Dell XPS with a new chip that is more expensive, the M2 Air in low power mode was still almost twice as fast while getting about three times better real world battery life when you're doing something like this. Now, when you're doing simple tasks, web browsing, things like that, you cannot tell the difference. It is crazy. And because of that, I would recommend toggling it on and off, and I'll show you how to do that easily. But first, I wanna show you guys the other benefit, and that is that not only do you get killer performance, this is the 14 inch right here, but the fans can also stay off while running your machine much cooler as well. So you get the full performance of the last gen, but way better battery life, cooler and quieter, which is awesome. Now, how do you enable this? Now, the standard way is to go to your settings, scroll down to battery, and then depending on your machine, it might look a little bit different, but you can click in here and then you can select low power if you're on battery. You also have the option on the power adapter, but unless your machine's getting hot, you don't need to do that. So you just go in here and toggle that. Now you can also use Siri to do that for you. If you like doing it that way, I personally do not. So the best option is to use a shortcut. There's this basic low power mode shortcut that you can download. I found it on iphonetricks.org and that will give you a little shortcut menu right here. Once you follow the instructions and you install it and give it permission to just be able to press it, it will run and it will enable low power mode. Now, there's another option called cool down, which is very cool. <laughs> you can quickly uh, toggle it right there in the menu. You press it, it toggles on and off. Now, this is made by the same guy who made the Vivid app, which we showed off and that's very cool. And the best thing about this is that they're working to give you automated control to toggle low power mode on and off at certain times of the day, or even depending on what app you are using. So personally, what I've been using is having low power mode on almost all the time. And then if I know that I'm gonna go do something very intensive that I want the best performance, toggle it off, render quickly, and then turn it back on. And the battery life has been amazing and the system has been running very cool with the fans shut off. Now, once again, if you have an older Intel-based machine, I would go and check out that previous video that I recommended. I'll go ahead and link that right over there. But you guys let me know, does this change your mind on the M2 chips and what you think about this? Click that circle above to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.